cloud. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to our first talk. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Akihiro Munemasa. He will be talking to us today about her mission at JC matrices of digraphs and root lattices over the Gaussian integers. Uh, please, Akihiro, uh, you can start. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that this wonderful conference uh, uh, became reality. Yeah, I was hoping to visit uh, Canada. Uh, the last time I visited Canada was, uh, 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 I guess some of you know, the Chris Kotzil's uh, conference. Here is, I have a cup from that meeting. Kotzil 65. So uh, that was uh, uh, 2014, so that was already seven years ago. Yeah, so, uh, so today I'm gonna to talk about Hermitian Jason symmetries of digraphs and root lattices over the Gaussian integers. And this is based on joint work of uh, Sasha Gavriluk. Uh, I think he is in the, in the audience. Uh, he's uh, from Russia, but he started a job in Japan but uh, I haven't been able to meet him in person, although we are in the same country because of the travel restriction, even inside Japan. So, uh, because I am the first speaker of this conference, let me begin with the very basic notions. Uh, uh, do I have 45 minutes, is that correct? Okay, so I, I think I, I can do it on time. I have only 25 slides. Uh, so let me uh, talk about this, what the spectrum of a graph is. Here are three uh, very simple graphs, uh, although not the standard notation, A2, A3, A3 tilde, uh, maybe not the so standard in graph theory community, but these are standard notation in Dinkin and extended Dinkin diagrams. A n means path with n vertices with the 0, 1 adjacency matrices. And so an A3 tilde, or in general, A n tilde is n plus one cycle. So here is the adjacency matrix of a four cycle. And spec means uh, the multi set of its adjacency matrices. So, so these are the uh, a multi-set of eigenvalue of the adjacent symmetries. So I don't distinguish adjacent symmetries of the graph and uh, uh, of the graph itself. And so these are the spectrum. And uh, I'm in this talk, I'm mainly interested in the largest value of the uh, spectrum that is called spectral radius. So spectral radius is denoted by uh, this row. Uh, so that's the maximum of the absolute value of the spectrum of the graph. Uh, for a simple undirected graph, the, all the eigenvalues are real and the uh, spectral radius is just the largest eigenvalue. So for the Previ ex previous examples, the spectral radius one, two, or square root two, and so on. So obviously, if you impose the spectral radius to be small, then there are not so many variety of graphs. In fact, uh, Smith and Lemon Society already in the 70s classified uh, connected graphs with spectral radius at most two. So they are precisely subgraphs of one of the extended Dinkin diagrams. All the extended Dinkin diagram has spectral radius exactly two. And if you take a proper subgraph, they have uh, spectral radius strictly less than two, and they are uh, just the ordinary uh, di uh, Dinkin diagrams. So these are very well known uh, in graph theory and Dinkin diagram is so fundamental in um, a lot of 
uh, disciplines in mathematics, especially in Lie theory. Now, uh, for uh, undirected graphs, uh, to keep the spectrum in the real numbers, uh, it's uh, necessary to introduce a variant of adjacency metrics using complex numbers so that the adjacency matrix is Hermitian. So this was introduced by Liu, Li, and Guo, Mohar in the independently. So their choice was to take the uh, mixed graph, or I would just simply call digraph. Digraph have uh, uh, oriented edges. And uh, 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 in, in, I also allow uh, arcs in both directions. If there are arcs in both directions, the, the, the XY entry of the adjacency metric is one and uh, I or minus I, that's the imaginary unit for uh, signifies the direction of an arc and zero if two vertices are not adjacent. So this is the Hermitian adjacency matrix I'm mainly concerned, but the recently Boyan Mohar in, in introduced and studied a variant uh, using uh, cubic root of unity. In fact, he didn't use cubic root, but uh, he used six primitive sixth root of unity. But uh, well, algebraically, they are not so much different. Well, my... Uh, my en entire talk is about algebraic graph theory, uh, not about quantum information, but uh, I was lucky to uh, attend a domestic conference just a week ago where uh, the invited speaker of that conference, uh, Yusuke Higuchi mentioned this Mohar's work. And uh, he pointed out uh, earlier work uh, done by uh, some quantum physicist like Elliot Lieb. So the, according to the, uh, Higuchi, his joint paper with Shirai in 2001, and also uh, earlier paper by Elliot Lieb and Loss and also Sonata in the 90s, they already considered adjacent operators of digraphs. So they are essentially the same Hermitian operators. Uh, in a more general setting. So this kind of Hermitian adjacency metric is quite natural and already appeared in uh, treated by quantum theorists. So this was the, well, basically the only connection to quantum physics in my talk and the rest of it completely in algebraic graph theory. So uh, what uh, Chris Agu and um, Boya Moha did in 2017 was to classify digraphs with Hermitian uh, spectral radius strictly distant to. Um, by Hermitian spectral radius, I mean the largest eigenvalue of the Hermitian adjacency matrix of a digraph. Of course, um, in my sense, in my definition, digraph includes uh, undirected graph, where the uh, undirected edges are considered to be uh, arcs in both directions. So the result just should certainly generalize Smith and lemon sidos result. So it should contain uh, uh, Dinkin diagrams. Now, the question I pose, I, I want to pose and I want to answer at the end is to classify digraphs with Hermitian spectral radius exactly to. Uh, this should include the extended thinking diagrams. Well, in the undirected case, to go from less than two to equal to two, uh, it's, it suffice to, it suffice to add one vertex from a path to a cycle, for example. So just the ordinary thinking diagram and the extended thinking diagram, then they differ only by a uh, addition of one vertex. So it seems uh, going from less than two to equal to two uh, seems easy, but uh, that is not the case for Hermitian uh, adjacency metrics. 
in, in fact, it's a, the problem is a lot harder. The, the partial classification is given by Yuan, Wang, Gong, and Chao uh, last year, uh, but the, they uh, impose additional uh, assumption that the graph be C4 free, that C4 is the four cycle. So they only classified uh, digraph with Hermitian spectral radius two without uh, C4 in the underlying graph. Well, that actually excludes a lot of graphs. So it's not, uh, it's quite far from the complete classification. Well, in order to talk about classification, I, I need to specify the equivalence or isomorphism for in the, in the directed graph context. For undirected graphs, the, the, the isomorphism is clear. The, in terms of matrices, it just means that the, you permit uh, multiply permutation matrix from left and right, right, and the left one is transpose, and that's just a permutation of vertices. Mm -hmm. So it's quite obvious how to uh, define isomorphism graphs. But for digraphs, with how can we formulate the some kind of equivalence using Hermitian adjacency matrices? Well, uh, Gua and Mohar uh, defined uh, the concept of four-way switching equivalence, but they, it is in fact the, essentially the same as these switching equivalence in terms of metrics. So uh, now the Hermitian adjacency matrix has entries zero, one, and plus minus i. So it's, it makes sense to allow a monomial matrix with entry zero plus minus one plus minus i. And to see if one can transpose uh, uh, a matrix H to H prime, or one could also allow the complex conjugate because that operation doesn't uh, change the sp spectrum. Well, so uh, this seems natural. Well, but it's not quite natural in terms of these matrices because the, in some sense, the, this class of Hermitian adjacency matrices is not clo closed under this transformation. Well, still, Guo and Moha classify digraphs with Hermitian spectral radius less than two up to this switching equivalence. Now, what, why uh, this is not so uh, consistent with the Hermitian adjacency matrix? Well, that's because of this presence of negative one. We allow negative one in this monomial matrix but we do not allow negative one in the Hermitian adjacency matrix. So one has to uh, choose the monomial matrix carefully so that after multiplying, the negative one doesn't appear in the entry. For example, if you start with the digraph here, then uh, after multiplying by a diagonal matrix from left and right, well, left one is the conjugate of the right one, and that amounts to multiplying i square root of minus one to this vertex, and that transforms the digraph to something not the digraph. This is a negative edge. That means the, the edge correspond, uh, the, the entry corresponding to this pair of vertices becomes minus one. So it seems natural to include a uh, signed graph in the classification. If we allow the switching equivalence as I defined. Now, if we allow negative one in the entry, the classification has been done before the work of Guo and Moher. That was a, a work of Gary Greaves in 2012. Now, he classified maximal 
permission matrices with entry is zero minus one, I minus I. So it's, it's a little different from this Hermitian genesis matrix because he allows negative one in the off diagonal entry. Diagonals are zero. Well, he also, in fact, he also allowed diagonal to be non zero, but I don't, we, we, we are not concerned with that case. So let's just, let us restrict ourselves to this case. And he classified maximal matrices subject to the spectral radius less than or equal to two. And his classification is up to a uh, weaker equivalence class. Uh, the weak, weaker means that uh, because now the entries are symmetric with respect to uh, negation, so uh, one could also consider negative of such matrices. The spectral radius still doesn't change. And uh, so, what Gary Greaves classified was the somewhat general, or more wider class of emission matrices up to a weaker uh, uh, equivalence relation. So, but the, also his uh, assumption is weaker in the sense that spectral radius is allowed to be two. So now I, I want to establish the correspondence between Guo Moha classification and uh, Greaves classification. They are slightly different. So here is one of the graphs appearing in the, in the work of Greaves. Uh, this is a graph uh, which I denote by T2K uh, and called toral tessellation. This graph has 2K vertices. Uh, there are k on the top and k on the bottom, and this one on left and right means these two vertices are the same, so they are identified. So this may be think of this may be thought of a graph on a Mobius band or a graph drawn on the torus, and this dotted these dotted edges are negative edges, so this is a signed graph. It turns out this graph has spectrum. Uh, two and minus two uh, repeated uh, k times each. And certainly any uh, anything similar will not uh, does not occur in Gu or Mohan classification because this has spectral radius exactly two. Uh, is this graph anything to do with Hermitian adjacent symmetrics of a digraph? Well, one can transform this graph by the equivalence as defined by Gary Greaves that in fact, uh, the adjacent symmetrics of this signed graph is equivalent to the adjacent, Hermitian adjacent symmetrics of this diagram, this diagram, which I denote by delta D 2K. So delta 2K, so this is a diagram uh, all edges are arcs and it has spectrum two and minus two. So it has spectral radius two. So this is one of the graphs which does not occur in the Guo Mohan's classification of digraphs with spectral radius less than two, but it does appear when spectral radius is allowed to be two. Well, uh, one difference between uh, the work of Guo Moha and Greaves is that Greaves only classified maximal ones. And so, and this is one of the maximal graphs. So if you delete some vertices, the in general spectral radius decreases. But in fact, if you delete just a few vertices, the spectral that doesn't decrease, it remains to be two. So there are a number of subgraphs which still have spectral radius too. So I, I don't uh, care to uh, classify all subdigraphs of this graph because there are uh, too many choices and not so interesting. So I stick to class the classification maximal digraphs with spectral radius exactly too. Yeah. Uh, 
In order to understand this graph geometrically, uh, it's better to uh, recall the old work of Cameron, Hartles, Seidel, and Schultz, that a representation of graph by root system. So uh, in, that, in that, their work, they considered graph is a smallest eigenvalue uh, minus two. In that case, one can add two times identity to the JSON symmetric to be to make, uh, to make a matrix uh, sem positive semi-definite. And, and so it can be regarded as a gram matrix of a set of vectors of squared norm two. So uh, for example, if you consider the root system DK, so this is the set of roots of root system type DK, then the, that toral tessellation that graph can be represented by this di uh, root system of type D to K. So oh, this I and J are completely arbitrary, but you just take consecutive pairs and allow plus minus, then uh, this plus edge, the uh, solid edge has, means the inner product is one, uh, dotted edge means the inner product negative one. So, so this set of uh, this set of vectors uh, represent the total tessellation graph T to K. Well, but uh, our interest is in the digraphs. So, uh, in order to uh, represent digraph, we need complex numbers. Well. Well, here uh, I didn't explain what EIs are, but I, I, I hope you can uh, guess that the EIs are standard orthonormal basis. Well, in the previous page, I, uh, I only consider real vector space, but here I extend the scalar to complex numbers. So if I uh, con construct a set of complex vectors, this crush collection, well, this is no longer the real root system D to DK, but uh, it's this set of vectors exactly represent the uh, digraph delta to K. Here, the direction of arc on top are alternating. I, mul I use multiplication by I, I on uh, every other vertex, and that gives this uh, digraph delta to k. Well, in order to be able to do that, I need to assume that the, this total, the k has to be even, and when k is odd, it, uh, some modification is needed, but I don't want to uh, talk about such complicated details. So, but it can be done. So here is our classification of uh, graphs with spectral radius exactly two. Well, it is based on the Greaves classification. Uh, so let delta be a connected digraph with spectral radius at most two. Well, I don't uh, ask exactly two, but then delta is switching equivalent to some sub digraph. That means I allow smaller graphs. That, so the, the classification gives only maximal ones. Maximal one is delta 2k, which I have, uh, you have seen in the previous slide, and some small modification of the delta 2k, which is uh, illustrated here. Uh, the only difference is that in this vertex, i is not multiplied the entire vect vector, but it is multiplied only this ek on, only. So it's slightly different representation, but that this also has spectral radius too. So these two families, uh, infinite family of, of digraph is spectral radius too. And there are three exceptional graphs with eight and 14 and 16 vertices. Uh, you will see uh, the picture of these exceptional digraphs at the very end. Uh, none of them uh, appear in Gu or Moha's classification because they have class spectral radius exactly two. Now, uh, can we recover the classification of Gu and Moha who classified spectral radius 
a digraph with spectral radius too. Well, in principle, it should be possible because we, this theorem, uh, we can make spectral radius strictly less than two, but then we need to look at sub digraphs of infinitely many such graphs and then determine two many, infinitely many sub digraphs, uh, which, which of them have spectral radius strictly less than two. That looks too complicated. So we, I, uh, we decide to take a different approach. Well, uh, the, uh, the work earlier uh, than Greaves, in fact, uh, James McKee is the supervisor of uh, Gary Greaves and uh, McKee and Smith already classified a uh, sine graph with spectral radius less than two. Sine graph, well, we have, we have seen an uh, uh, example for sine graph. So sine graph is a graph with weight, edge weight plus or minus one. So there are plus edge or positive edge and negative edges. And then it can be represented by a zero plus minus one adjacency matrix. I will show you the, there is uh, a standard way to convert or construct digraph with n vertices to sine graph with two n vertices. And the spectral radius stay the same so that we can use McKee Smith classification of sine graph with strictly less than two and try to see, go to see if we can go back to digraphs. So that's our, our strategy. So how can we construct a sine graph from a digraph? Well, the associated sine graph, so this, there is a very natural way of associating a sine graph to a digraph. If you look at this matrix, well, transpose B is same as minus B. So this is exactly representing complex number by two by two real matrix. It's the uh, analog of this representation. So whenever you have a Hermitian matrix and write H as A plus IB with A and B real matrix, then you can construct this real matrix. And this is a zero plus minus one matrix if H is a Hermitian adjacency matrix. And uh, spectrum of uh, this uh, matrix twice bigger is just twice, uh, uh, twice of the multiplicity of the original uh, Hermitian JCC matrix. So the spectral radius remains the same. So whenever we have a digraph with spectral radius less than two, it gives a, a sine graph with spectral radius less than two with two times the number of vertices. Oops. So here are some example of, of associated sine graph of a uh, digraph. So here is a digraph, which I, U1 tilde, I, I write U1 tilde, and uh, it has four vertices. The associated sine graph has eight vertices, and that's this U1. And similarly, this U6 tilde is a digraph with four vertices, and its associated sine graph is a sine graph U6 here. Well, the reason why I write U1, U6, is that I just uh, borrow the convention from McKee and Smith classification. So McKee and Smith classification is as follows. If you have a connected sine graph with spectral radius less than two, and then again, they classify only maximal ones. So they, uh, but in this case, the, uh, the subgraphs are not too many. It's, it's, it's not too complicated to understand all the subgraphs. But to, to, to make the theorem short, let's, let us list only uh, maximal ones. So uh, McKee and Smith says that this, the sine graph with spectral radius less than two are uh, just 2k cycle with one negative edge. Like this one is a four cycle with one negative edge. If you consider ordinary four, uh, four cycle, then the spectral radius would be two. So that's not allowed. But if you make one of the edge be negative, then spectral radius will be strictly less than two. 
one could also attach tail of arbitrary length to a four cycle with negative h. That's uh, q of hk. And then there are 11 exceptional graphs, all have eight vertices and all bipartite. So that's the classification of McKee and Smith. So let me show you the, uh, some pictures. So, uh, so there are 11 exceptional diagrams, uh, exceptional signed graphs. You have, we, I have shown you U1 and U6, and these are two of them. And the rest are like this. So for, uh, let me show you first five of them. I've shown you U1 and U2, U3, U4, U5, but U5 turned out to be exactly the Dinkin diagram of type E8. And U6 to U11 uh, as well, you, and we have seen U6 already. Uh, these all have a, uh, eight vertices and bipartite. Okay. Now, uh, conversely, if you, if, if we have a, a list of possible uh, sign graph, there's a, in, well, a way to go back to die graph if the sign graph is bipartite. Indeed, if you have a bipartite graph, then the its adjacency matrix of the, is of this form. So you can simply attach I in front of B to make it the Hermitian matrix. So this construction uh, is called the, the, the canonical digraph of a signed graph. So if, uh, if S is a bipartite signed graph, then one can, is, one can canonically uh, convert it to a digraph by this operation on modifying the adjacency matrix. For example, here is a signed graph U7 in the Marquis Smith classification. And if you apply this uh, operation, then, the, then this uh, Hermitian matrix has have entries plus minus i and all the rest are zero. So there are no diagons then all edges are uh, arcs. So this is the canonical digraph. And it's quite easy to see that the, the original sign graph and uh, canonical digraph have the same spectral radius. So this is a way to construct the digraph with spectral radius less than two from sign graph. So here is the uh, restatement of classification of Guo and Mohar. Uh, I modify the statement by uh, restricting the classification to, 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 to um, maximal one, be, so that I don't have too many graphs in the classification. So I don't care uh, no maximal one, so that I uh, I can say that the the connected digraph uh, is switching equivalent, equivalent to one with the following maximal one, uh, equ equivalent to sub digraph of the one with the maximal ones as follows. So uh, there are uh, cycle and the modification. These are the first four of them. It is written, uh, drawn in this picture. So this first one is just a directed cycle. And the second one has some modification in the direction of edge. And this is the undirected edge and the undirected edge with uh, uh, different directions. So these uh, modification of cycles uh, appearing in the first four items. And the fifth item uh, is a box A zero C zero. This is something you have seen that uh, Q H. So it was originally like this, but uh, if you uh, convert to a digraph, um, that then that's what this five 
uh, means. And then uh, there are two examples I showed you how to construct the, uh, the associated sign graph of a digraph. The, these two graphs have four vertices. Associated sign graph are U1 and U6, eight vertices. And then uh, canonical digraphs of those except, exceptional eight vertex graph uh, uh, appearing in the Marquis Smith classification. There are 11 of them. For example, this was the U7 converted to the canonical digraph. Here I wrote amended because this graph, canonical digraph U7, turns out to be missing in Guo Moha's classification. Now, uh, finally, I, I want to uh, talk about the uh, uh, connection to Gaussian lattices. Uh, so if I start with the digraph, then uh, constructing, the, constructing the associated sign graph just means that the, you, you double the number of vertices, but you make a uh, matrix two, twice larger but this is like uh, uh, regarding complex number as a two dimensional vector space over the reals, or regarding the ring of Gaussian integers as free Z module of rank, rank two. And uh, it's not only the module, but the, we have lattices because the Whenever we have a positive semi-definite matrix, then it can be regarded as a, a gram matrix of some positive definite inner product. In the ordinary Euclidean case, it's just a symmetric bilinear form, but the, in the Gaussian lattice, Gaussian case, uh, we have a Hermitian gram matrix. So we did a positive definite Hermitian form. So uh, this correspondence of digraph and associated sign graph uh, essentially regarding Gaussian lattice as Euclidean lattice by ignoring imaginary part. So, um, see. moreover, uh, we have uh, root lattices because we have a graph with spectral radius two. So the the graphs are represented by roots, that's, that is vectors of norm two. And uh, we already know the classification of uh, root lattices. Uh, root lattices are precisely the root system of uh, type A or D or E. So every Euclidean root lattice is, is an orthogonal direct sum of root lattices of type A or D or E. They are called irreducible root lattices. And there's a Gaussian analog uh, for the Hermitian gram matrix with uh, diagonal entry two. So they uh, are classified by uh, my uh, Kitazume and myself in 2002. Uh, so they essentially the root lattices with the extension of scalar to ring of Gaussian integers. And then there are two more uh, cases which are not of this form, they D2N and the E8, they can be regarded as a, a Gaussian lattice. D2N can be regarded as a, a rank N Gaussian lattice and E8 can be regarded as a rank four Z8 lattice, a Z, ZI lattice. And they actually correspond to the classification of uh, uh, Digraph is spectral radius two. Recall that we the, this is, was the, our classification of uh, digraph is spectral radius exactly two. They are uh, delta two k and delta two k i, and also I mentioned there are three exceptional graphs on these vertices. And delta two k 
corresponds to uh, just dk with scalar extended uh, delta 2ki, which is slight modification, but it become it corresponds or it its representation by norm two vectors actually generates the Gaussian lattice, which is uh, as a uh, Euclidean lattice, it is nothing but D2K, but uh, it has a uh, different form than this scalar extension. And there are three exceptional graphs. Uh, so, uh, so delta A dagger is a, a cube with some extra edges and all edges are well, maybe I missed. So this, these are not uh, uh, arcs. And uh, maybe I, I didn't draw it correctly. Uh, but the delta 14 is a, a 14 vertex graph. And uh, they are all uh, arcs and delta 16 it's a 16 vertex digraph. And uh, it turns out that the delta uh, eight dagger, this corresponds to the E8, but the ZI structure. So it is a rank four Gaussian lattice. And this rank four Gaussian lattice was already found by Iyanaga in 69. And delta 14 and delta 16, they, they correspond to just a uh, extension of the scale of E7 root lattice and E8 root lattices. Okay, so I have three more minutes, but uh, this is just, it seems I can finish on time. Uh, oops. Wait a second. Ah, yes. So this is my final slide. As I mentioned earlier, the Boyan Mohar uh, just year, last year proposed to study spectra of Hermitian adjacent symmetrics, where plus minus i are replaced by omega and on omega bar. Here, here omega is not the standard uh, cubic root of unity, but the primitive sixth root of unity. So he proposed to study such. Uh, Hermitian JSC matrices. So it's natural to uh, uh, ask the same question. So, so whether it's possible to classify digraphs with this variant of Hermitian JSC matrix having spectral radius at most two. Well, there is a counterpart of this work by, again, by Gary Greaves. He classified the cyclotomic matrices. Cyclotomic means just the spectral radius at most two over this Z omega. Uh, this is called the ring of Eisenstein integers. So maybe his classification can be uh, in, reinterpreted as a classification of maximal graphs with, with this kind of emission adjacent matrices. Also, the I want to point out the connection to uh, lattices over this Eisenstein integers. Walter Feit already in 79 considered root lattices over this ring of integers. So there seems to be, so this is also quite interesting uh, research to pursue. Okay, well, I have one minute, but that's all I want to talk for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Akihiro. Are there any questions? Uh, and if you have a question, you can put a question on the chat or you can open your microphone and ask the question yourself if you want. I won't be able to see all of you, so please go ahead if anyone wants. Apparently, you can also raise your hand here on the reactions. That could be helpful. I'll start off with a naive question so that people feel smart when they ask theirs. Um, so, so 
there, there's this amazing connection between you know graphs with smallest eigenvalue at least minus two, and these and magically the the the, um, the Dinkin diagrams mm -hmm. uh, correspond to these graphs with largest eigenvalue two. But if if I move to root lattices over the Gaussian integers, mm -hmm. is there is there some similar symmetry between be, between um, the 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 diagrams, fundamental diagrams, are there Dinkin diagrams for these things? And and uh, is there is there some uh, spectral connection to to the uh, the Dinkin diagrams? Mm -hmm. Let's see what I I don't understand exactly what you mean, but the, I the, the, so what stated. Dinkin? So I would say the. So what I would say that what we classified with the analog of a Dinkin diagram over the Gaussian integers. Okay. So, but you also mentioned that the smallest eigenvalue minus two, but smallest eigenvalue minus two, then there are um, large, larger, uh, they form the larger class of graphs and not so much uh, related to well, no, but uh, I, yeah, I, I didn't think much about the, the graphs with smallest eigenvalue minus two in the Hermitian sense. Yeah, it just amazed me. I, I learned some in a previous century that this, this uh, smallest eigenvalue, at least minus two, that these graphs are, are, are somehow contained inside these, these uh, lattices. Yeah, and and um, and and this symmetry always always baffled me with the Dinkin diagram showing up the largest eigenvalue at most two, and I thought I wondered if there was a, a similar symmetry uh, when you move outside the reals. Mm -hmm. It's a vague question, so you, you're yeah. not with this. <laughs> I think uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, certainly. If you have a smallest eigenvalue at least minus two, then. You uh, in the Hermitian sense, still you can rep represent it by root lattices, and the root lattices there are a few uh, two uh, diff instead of uh, the the in addition to the uh, scalar uh, extension, there are two more uh, specific uh, Gaussian root lattice. So. It may be possible to interpret the graphs represented by uh, each of the Gaussian lattices. Like in the ordinary case, the DN are graphs represented by DN are generalized line graph. So it may be possible to uh, characterize graphs represented by uh, D2N with the Gaussian structure or try to classify. Uh, graphs represented by E8 with the Gaussian structure. Thank you. There are two questions in the chat, by the way. Yes. So uh, let me read them. Uh, what happens if in the definition I is replaced by minus I for the AGC Hermitian matrix? Is it to take the complex conjugate? Or reverse the direction, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, perhaps. But I, I suppose that that wouldn't make any difference on your classification, I guess. Right? Yeah, certainly it doesn't make. Uh, I mean, the if I recall the switching equivalence. In the classification is up to switching equivalence. Switching equivalence means, um, oops. You also uh, allow complex conjugate, so. So I don't distinguish the, well, 
the graph a digraph and it's reversed digraph. I, I guess it's also a good point to ask the second question from the chat because this is the slide. Mm -hmm. uh, what does switching equivalence mean in terms of graphs? Well, uh, for the Hermitian case, well, the, it's a little difficult to uh, explain. For the minus uh, plus minus one adjacency met I mean, metrics, it is quite obvious that the you replace edge by my uh, non edge that was the original switching uh, due to side but her, for Hermitian adjacency matrix the diagonal entries could be one or minus one or i and minus i so there are four possibilities so so to describe switching equivalence in the graph theory manner um, you first have to De uh, decompose the set of vertices into four parts and explain combinatorially what the the how the edges changes depending on the, uh, the location of the end vertices and but this this is explained in the work of Guo and Moha. Nice, thanks. Um... I also had a question uh, that's exactly about your last slide with the uh, sixth root of unity. Uh -huh. If perhaps you could return there. Excuse me? If you could return to your last slide. Last slide. Yes. Yes, okay, thanks. I was about to ask um, if, if it is possible indeed to make the classification with these guys. And maybe mm -hmm. now perhaps I would, the follow up thing would be what if instead of just one omega and omega conjugate, you allowed the other conjugates of omega? And I don't know, because then there would be a sort of like analogy with using I minus i one and minus one and thinking in terms of the uh, of the covers i guess no i mean does that make any sense no i don't get it so so what moha proposed was that the uh, so directed arc is represented by one particular complex number and uh, its right. opposite direction is its complex conjugate Right, right, but then yeah. you would have okay. a sort of like second type of yeah direction, and and also allow minus one. Would that do you think that would make the problem easier? Second, second type. I mean, because you would have the other omega square, for example. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, but then there are four different. Uh, Primitive sixth root of unity. Uh, no, right. no, um, there are not. There are two different sixth root of unity, and then two uh, cubic roots of unity. Yes. So, and the, but the Gary Greaves uh, classifies the matrices allowing all of these okay. entries. Okay, so that would be contained in the work of Gary. Yes. Okay. But he classifies the cyclotomic, right? Not the graphs in general. Right, not the graphs in general. So, so the uh, trying to extract the, the Hermitian adjacency of the graph means that you you have to restrict the entries to be a particular subset of these um, units, right. and somehow it's it's a little. Uh, unnatural okay okay thanks um are there any more questions so i suppose we can all uh, thank akihiro again thank you very much for listening thanks akihiro all right